Most times, I'm not supposed to be the front here at the time. I'm only about what is different story. But when I have to take people up and drop them, it's just a different story. So, uh, if you excuse my witness, and uh, I pray as we go through today that we will learn something from the Lord. Amen. And then we learn from Him, we will show not only to each other. So before I continue, we just want to have a word of prayer. Amen. Loving Father in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity to bring your presence in your name amongst the holy angels. We pray, Father, that the Holy Spirit will be here to teach us. Come to us yourself and every preconceived idea that we may learn of you today. We come knowing nothing, but we pray that as we continue that the Holy Spirit will teach us and we will indeed be filled with your knowledge. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Want the mic? Do you need the mic? You want it to be recorded? This is no problem. Good morning once again. Let's see if I see your study. I just want to read this statement. It's very profound. It says the statement from Newton and Herald, February 18, 1890, paragraph 15. It says, those who, those who cannot impartially examine the evidences of a position that differs from theirs are not fit to teach in any department of God's court. Amen? If we cannot look at evidences, look at a teaching impartially, which means there must be no conceived, preconceived ideas and notions. If we look at it, you know, impartially and examine the evidences, we should see something that we must see. But um, we know that there are some things that definitely is not worthy looking at. Mm-hmm. But once it's from the Bible, once we can prove certain things from the Bible, certain teachings from the Bible, we can say yes, thus says the Lord. And this is true. Amen? Amen. Amen. Today we want to look at the 20 and 4 pillars. So very, not really have any salvation in the study, but it's very instructive for us to know. Because there has been some misunderstanding about the 20 and 4 elders. And um, have you ever heard that uh, the 24 the 20 and 4 elders are the people that resurrected with Christ resurrected. You have heard that before, right? Many changed them. Yes. Seven walked them. They say that um, the 20 and 4 is the 12th tribe of Israel, the 12th tribe of Israel, and then the other 12 is the 12 apostles. Hmm. But there is no scripture, there is no scripture of prophecy to back up that evidence. So today we will see that the 24, the 20 and 4 elders are a different set of beings. And as we go on, we're going to see who they are, where they come from. Amen? Amen. Mm-hmm. It would be instructive though to read chapter 4 and chapter 5 because there is really going to center mm-hmm. our study on. But it is not um, because of time. But I would, as we go on, you'll see that what, what what the Bible says. Who are they? Who are the 20 and 4 elders? That's the question we're going to answer. 
where did they come from? That's one of the questions that we do. That's two of the basic questions that we are going to answer today. The title and proposition of Elder is mentioned some 18 times in the Bible. The title of position of elders is mentioned in some 180 times, times in the Bible. Sometimes the position of elder or elder is ascribed to being the eldest or as, or as a leader or pastor. For example, in Genesis chapter 10 and verse 21 it says, On the Shem also the father of all the children of Eber, sorry, Genesis chapter 10 and verse 21 tells us, On the Shem also the father of all the children of Eber, the brother of Jephthah, the elder, so we see here that the, the older, the one who was born first, is called the elder. Even to him were children born. Genesis 25, 23 tells us this, And the Lord said unto her, And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy origin. And the one people shall be stronger than the other. Stronger than the other people. And the elder shall serve the younger. So the elder brother, the one who was born first, shall serve the youngest. Luke uh, 15 and verse 25 tells us, Now the elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. So we see here that elder is ascribed to the eldest, the firstborn. Alright? Whether it be a boy or girl, ascribed to the firstborn. Continue. In Exodus chapter 3 verse 16 he says, Go and gather the elders of Israel and say unto them, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, prepared unto me, say, I have surely visited you, and seen that which is done to you in Egypt. So we see here that some of the leaders in, each, in, in, in Israel were called elders. Right? Uh, chapter 17 and verse 15, uh, 5 tells us this, And the Lord said unto Moses, Go on before the people, and take with thee the elders of Israel, not the old people, but it is the the elders, the leaders, the prince and the princesses, and thy rod, wherewith thou smitest the river, take in thy hand, and go. Numbers 11, 24 tells us, And Moses went out told the people the words of the Lord and gathered the seventy men of the elders of the people and set them around and about the tabernacle. Continue. Acts 14 and verse 23 tells us this, And when they had ordained them elders in the church and had prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord on whom they believe. Elders of the church. Could be pastor, could be an elder like Brother G. Alright? Acts 20 and verse 17 tells us, And from Miltus, Miltus, he sent to Ephesus and called elders of the church. Titus 1 and 5 tells us, For this cause let I increase that thou shalt set in order the things that are wanting and ordain elders in every city as I have appointed thee. So it is clear enough that you know, elders could refer to the oldest son or elders could be referred to pastor or an elder in the church that has been ordained in the church. Is that clear enough? Now we can go on. It says, the book of Revelation, the 20 and 4 elders are mentioned some 12 times. And so these are the texts here. You can jump them down if you, if you like. Alright? So I think it's a record, so you can go through the 
this recording. So the, in the book of Revelation, the 24 elders are mentioned some 12 times as you go to the book of Revelation. Who are the 20 and 4 elders? That's a big question. That's one of the questions we're going to answer. Are they the number of saints that resurrected with Christ at his resurrection? And it gives us the quotation there, Matthew 27, 53 and 53. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 8 tells us where he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and did gifts unto men. Psalms uh, 68 and verse 18 tells us, thou hast ascended on high, thou hast led captivity captive. And so this is all in reference to the resurrected multitude of people that resurrected with Christ when he came. But, tradition would tell us, you know, and up until a few years ago, I always used to understand that the 20 and 4 elders are the people that resurrected with Christ at Matthew uh, when he resurrected. But there is no scripture to back that up. But when you read Revelation chapter 4 and Revelation chapter 5, you would notice that the 20 and 4 elders are mentioned before Jesus came and was inaugurated and anointed to start his ministry. And we will see that as we go on. The Sanctuary Services and the CC. In Exodus 29 and verse 23, it says, it tells us this. Now, the Sanctuary Services is the whole plan of salvation. And it has a lot of significance. It teaches us a lot as we study it step by step. Everything pointed to Jesus and his ministry. You see here in Exodus uh, 29 and verse 23, it says, And one loaf of bread, and one cake of oil bread, and one wafer out of the basket of the unleavened bread that is before the Lord. Exodus 29 and verse 24 tells us, And thou shalt put all the hands, put, it, put all in the hands of Aaron, and in the hands of his son, and shall leave them a wave offering before the Lord. Now what is going on here? Now, in the time of the sanctuary services, they had to bring an offering, and wave it before the Lord. And that was the offering of the first harvest they had to bring before the Lord. And that is very significant with Jesus and those that resurrected with him. He had to present himself before the Lord and then present the, the ones that resurrected with him as first fruits. Now they are not the first first fruits. Jesus is also called the first fruit. So if we go back to this traditional view, that the 20 and 4 elders are those that resurrected with Christ, it would be a big distortion because the Bible says differently. Alright? As we go on, we will see. Now, the feast weeks of harvest of the first fruits. Leviticus 23 and verse 11 tells us, And he shall wave the sheep before the Lord to be accepted for you. And the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. Uh, verse 12 tells us, And he shall offer that day when he waves the sheep and, and a he lamb without blemish of the first year for a offering unto the Lord. Amen? Mm -hmm. Let's continue. Say, woman, chapter 11, verse 16 tells us this. For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy, holy, and the root, the holy so are the branches. Who's called the branches? The first John 15. We are called the branches. We are called the branches. Amen. Let's continue. Question. Christ has to present himself as the first truth of them that resurrected from the grave. Now, the 24 elders the 20 and 4 elders could have never been the first group. Because as we read chapter 4 of Revelation, the 20 and 4 elders are mentioned before Jesus comes. Are you getting it? 
It's clear? When you read chapter 5, you will see, then Jesus appeared there as the Lamb. As you read chapter 5 as we go on, we will see. Oh, Revelation? Yes, chapter 5 and Revelation. So chapter 4, it tells us about the 20 and 4 elders. Jesus is nowhere mentioned. Alright? Only in chapter 5, Jesus is mentioned as the Lamb who take the book away and to open the seal and so on and so on. As you go on. If Christ has to present himself as the first fruit of them that resurrected with him or of the resurrected righteous, how could the twenty and four elders be there in heaven in the presence of God, the Father, and in the presence of the holy angels before him worshiping? Could never happen. So the question remains, who are the twenty and four elders? As we proceed, we will, we will get the answer. So based on, based on, and according to scripture, the twenty and four elders could not be the saints that are resurrected with Christ early that Sunday morning. So who are they? And where did they come from? Who are the twenty and four elders? And where did they come from? Revelation chapter 5 and verse 8 tells us this. And when he had taken the book, and the four beasts, and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one in them hearts and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints, whose man tells us, and they sang on his song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us. We're going to come back to this. We're going to come back to this now. The traditional view tells us that the twenty and four elders are spoken of here as redeemed us to God by his blood out of every kindred and town and people and nation. And so they say, oh, okay, that this twenty and four elders are the people who have been redeemed who were resurrected with Christ. Mm -hmm. But we will see as we go on and you really scrutinize this redeem us. Alright? Verse 5, verse uh, 10 tells us, And hath made us un unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Let's continue. So, so far it's clear, right? Now, we will look at this Revelation chapter 5, 8 and 9, in the different versions, and you'll see something that is very significant, very eye-opening, and very instructive. It says here, I want you to look at the red, the red for, for time's sake. Let's look at the red. Now, let's go back. Now, remember in verse 9, it says, Thou, thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood, out of every kindred, and town, and people, and nation. Let's continue. You want to read that same, those same verses in a different version. And here what it says, red words. It says, For thou hast was slain, and did hast purchased unto God with thy blood, men of every tribe, and town, and people, and nation. Notice the difference here. They did not say we did us anymore. For purchase us, it says men. Right? Let's continue. Another version tells us this. Read in the red word. It says in the new revised version. It says, For you are slaughtered, and by your blood you ransom for God saints of every tribe and tongue and people. Notice that they didn't say you have redeemed us from among men. Now, I love the King James Version. It is close, it's as closest to the original. Now, the, 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 the King James Version comes from the, the Textus Receptus. I've done some studies on that. I love the King James. But in some instances, you have to dig deep. 
surface reading would make surface question. And when you do surface reading and surface study, you will reach the erroneous ideas and doctrine. So we have to dig deep. So here I say it now. Sorry, let's go back. Because he was slain and with your blood you have purchased for God persons. You know, say us, redeem us, to say persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. Now, just reading chapter 4 and chapter 5 of Revelation and where the 20 and 4 elders are mentioned, you could see that the 24, the 20 and 4 elders could have never been people that were resurrected with Christ and ascended. Right? They could not have been there first. He had to present himself first as the way sheep. And then the people that resurrected him, he had to master, Lord, the fire, my hands, my blood for these people. Alright? Let's continue. Another person tells us this. The New Living Translation tells us this red word. For you are slaughtered for you were slaughtered, and your blood has ransomed people for God, for every tribe, language, and people, and nation. Let's continue. Doing the standard version, so let's approximate the same. For you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed people for, for God, for every, for every tribe, language, and people, and nation. This is coming to grips now. Alright? Let's see this. It says, We are pages, page 8, 29, and paragraph 1 tells us this. The time has come for Christ to ascend to his father's throne. As a divine conqueror, he was about to return with the trophies. Who do you think these trophies would be? <coughs> All right. So if these trophies, he had to present them, how could they be there before him? Mm -hmm. As people say, the 20 and 4 elders represent the people that could not have been. Right? So it means then that they are not from earth. No. But they are beings. Created beings. Okay. Let's continue. Let me see it quick. As a divine conqueror, he was about to return with trophies of victory to the heavenly courts before his death. He had declared to his father, I have finished the work which thou gave us me to do. After the, his resurrection, he carried on earth for a season, that his disciples might become familiar with him in his risen and glorified body. Now he was ready to leave, to leave, to, to leave taking. For the meeting, right. He had authenticated the fact that he was a living savior. His disciples need no longer associate him with the tomb. They could think of him as glorified before the heavenly universe. So the disciples could not have been in doubt anymore. They knew now that this has to be, this is the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's continue. As the, place of his as, the, as the place of his ascension, Jesus chose the spot so often hallowed by his presence while he dwelt among men. Not Mount Zion, the place of David's city. Not Mount Moriah, the temple site, was to be thus honored. There Christ had been mocked and rejected. The ways, there the ways of mercy Still returning in a stronger tide of love had been beaten back by hearts as hard as rock. Hence, Jesus, weary and heart burdened, had gone forth to find rest in Mount Olive. So there was his point of ascension. Mount Olive. Let's take him from the dark ages, page 18 and paragraph 2. The page here. Now, this is the Dark Ages, page 50, five of one. It says, Now with the eleven disciples, Jesus made his way towards the mountain 
as they passed through the gate of Jerusalem, many wandered eyes looked upon the little company, led by one whom a few weeks before the rulers had condemned and crucified. The disciples knew that this was to be their last interview with their master. Jesus spent the time in conversation with them, repeating his former instruction as they approached Gethsemane. He paused that they might call to mind the lessons he had given them on that night of his great agony. Again, he looked upon the vine by which he had then represented the union of his spirit with himself and his father. Again, he repeated the truth he had then unfolded. All around him were reminders of his unrequited love. Even the disciples who were there, so, even the disciples who were so dear to his heart, had a this hour of humiliation, reproach, and forsaken him. As far as the approach, Mark Moriah, he they brought to view the seminary and all the things that happened there and all the instructions given there. With with times outstretched in blessings and as if in assurance of his protecting care, he slowly ascended from among them, drawn heavenward by a power stronger than any earthly attraction. As he crossed upward, the way stricken disciples looked with straining eyes for the last glimpse of the ascending Lord. A cloud of, a cloud of glory hid him from their sight, and the words came back to them as the cloud, as the cloudy chariot of angels received him. Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. At the same time, they have floated down to them the sweetest and most joyous music from the angelic voice. Just imagine, a cloud of angels. Jesus is ascending in a cloud of angels. And as they, they, they sound this beautiful song of music. Just imagine that. And the disciples behold this. Now this is a literal, tangible event that happened. And this is to assure us that salvation for you and I. This is to assure us the reality of God's kingdom. It reassures the reality of having a relationship with Jesus and be transformed. Amen? Amen. Let's go on. These angels were the company that had been waiting in the in a shining cloud to expose Jesus to his heavenly home. The more exalted of the of angel John. They were two who had come to, to the tomb at Christ's resurrection, and they had been with him throughout his life of earth. It stated that these angels, two angels, have been with him throughout his life on earth. And this is a tell us that once we have the mind of Christ, once we have this relationship with Christ, we will have two ascendant angels attending each and every one of us in our walk, our Christian walk. With eager, with eager desire, all heaven had waited for the end of this carrying in the world marked by the truth of sin. The time had now come for the heavenly universe to receive their king. Did not the two angels along to join the throne that welcomed Jesus? But in sympathy and love for those whom he had left, they waited to give them comfort. And they are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Let's continue. Christ has ascended to heaven in the form of humanity. The disciples had beheld the cloud receive him. The same Jesus who had walked and talked and prayed with them, who had broken bread with them, who had been with them in their boats on the lake, 
who had that very day fallen with them up the ascent the, the of Mount of Olive. The same Jesus had now gone to share his father's joy. And the angels had assured them that every one whom they had seen go up in heaven would come again, even as he had ascended, he will come with clothes and every eye shall see him. We know that from Acts chapter chapter one verses eight to eleven, where to say that the same Jesus who has seen ascended was and we know that from Revelation chapter 1 verse 7 that all eyes shall be holy. Amen? Even there we have pierced Even there we have pierced Yes. Of all the elders, um, well, number one, we need to know that in Old Testament, when the Leviticus priesthood was uh, instituted, there was 24 priests okay. to help Aaron doing his work. It's part of the sanctuary administration. That's number one. Number two, the redeem, when it comes to redemption, the biggest trouble we have in Christianity is we think Jesus is just for us. And when the answer you buy from that is that many doctrines are going to be wrong. Yeah. Even the angel has been redeemed. They have been redeemed from what? Mm-hmm. From the doubt on God's character of law in their mind. Right. These are ages, pages 7, 58, yeah. paragraph 1 and 2, and then 61, paragraph 2. So, you can add to this because the version argument, I will, if you have gone to the original text, I would be much more agree with that. I don't disagree with it, I would suggest that you add much stronger proof to it. Right. Number one, 24 elders, 24 priests from uh, the Old Testament. Why? Because they were doing this based on the pattern of heaven. Oh yeah, I have a lot. Now, but I don't want to take over the study because we don't have a lot of time. We can do the second part. And next is, the redeem is not just human being. And while the Bible does not explicitly say that to us, but if you look at how things work according to John 12, verse 31, 32, Christ is very, very clear when he's speaking about the redemption. It includes angels. Right. So you can add a picture and prophet, pages 68, paragraph 2, and then the other quotation with these are ages. These 24 elders redeemed cannot be human beings. Why? Because the organization of heaven was there way before yes. Christ coming on earth. You see that as you go. Okay. And that was given already as a pattern for the priesthood in the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. And when it comes to redeem, we need to know not only human beings are redeemed. The angel and the unfallen world are also redeemed from the deception Satan has put in their mind. Mm-hmm. So these two arguments are very, very strong. And you add it the way it will make it really, it will help people to see that. Because people hold on this position because of redeem. That's number one. Redeem us from the Yeah, when they redeem us, then trouble. Angel were redeemed right here on earth. Right here. When Christ died on the cross, and all the doubt left their mind. And they broke their last link of sympathy with the devil. These are pages 761, paragraph 2. So when they bring that last link from the devil now, from Satan, then they are free from everything that has to do with darkness. That's why Gabriel become mightier than Satan. But before that, he could not have stand Satan in anything. So they have been also redeemed from that cloud that is in their mind. Right. Okay. So who are those two angels that came in at Christ? I know Gabriel is one. Mm-hmm. The other one is the second covenant church. The Bible doesn't mention the name. Right. And the Catholic people call it uh, uh, Raphael. Raphael. And we say no because the Bible don't call any name. So we don't give no name. Because the answer they give Raphael, the next day they start worshiping it. Yeah. They start making a prayer for Raphael. Yeah. You know? It's very dangerous. And the Bible don't say no name, don't give any name. Exactly. Hmm? The answer they give the name, boom, they make a prayer for it and then they make a worship for it. Right away. And they make a statue for it. I used to have St. Raphael prayer myself. 
Jadi kencing selang kekat berwati berdi Terus Okay. It says the disciples no longer had any distrust of the future. They knew that Jesus was in heaven and that his sympathies were with, were, were, were with them still. They knew that they had a friend at the throne of God. Are you happy that you have a friend at the throne of God? Mm-hmm. Not only a friend but a lawyer, somebody who is like you and I, who passed through the same experiences mm-hmm. like you and I. And that's a chance that will be evident that you and I can be there with Christ at the Father's throne also. Amen. They knew that they had a friend at the throne of God, and they were eager to present their request to the Father in the name of Jesus. In solemn all, they bowed in prayer, repeating their shower, whosoever is, whatsoever is your heart, the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Hitherto have he asked nothing in my, in my name, ask, and he shall receive that your joy may be full. So we have a friend in heaven. Amen. His name is Jesus. Amen. He's just like us. For from now until eternity, or from that time when he uh, ascended, he would be in the form of a human being. He will have both, both uh, characteristics, his divine characteristics and the human characteristics throughout eternity. Because he felt the same thing as you and I. Let's imagine you have a lawyer. You get into trouble. You have a lawyer that passed through the same things that you experience, and he can then he plead for you better because he passed through those same experiences. Wouldn't you think that you have a very, a very strong case? Mm-hmm. Yes, Jesus has a very strong case, so we can trust him. Let's continue. It says, All heaven was waiting to welcome the Savior to the celestial courts. As he ascended, he led the way, and the multitude of captives set free at his resurrection, what? They followed. Let's read that again. As he ascended, he led the way, and the multitude of captives set free at his resurrection, followed. So how could be, how could the twenty and four elders be these people that were resurrected? Can it be? Because they came after when Jesus came. Alright? And we see that clear in Revelation chapter 5. It says, The heavenly host, with shouts and acclamations of praise and celestial song, attended the joyous train. Alright? This is Desire Pages, page uh, 32, verse 5. You can see it. Five verse is very short at this ending. As they drew near to the city of God, the challenge is given by the escorting angels. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lift them up the everlasting door, and the king of glory shall come in. Joyful, the waiting sentinels respond, Who is this king of glory? This they say, not because they know not who he is, but because they would hear the answer of exalted, of exalted praise. Amen. The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle, lift up ye heads, O ye gates, even lift them up the everlasting door, and the King of glory shall come in. Again is heard the challenge, who is this King of glory? For angels never weary of hearing his name exalted. The escorting angels made the reply, The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. He is the King of glory. Then the portals of the city of God were opened wide, and the angel that strong swept through the gates, and amid the boast of rapture music, they sang that song. Praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Just imagine. A, Jesus, a, a scene that is going on in heaven. Mm-hmm. Jesus presents himself. And after him, he brought a trophy that was resurrected in him. And he presents them to the Lord. Amen. And this is symbolic and parallel to the, the wave sheet in the sanctuary services that the priest is supposed to wave. The first part of the harvest is supposed to wave that. Alright? So it could never be the 24 elders there. It says here, there is a throne, and around it the rainbow of promise. 
There are cherubim and seraphim. Now, Sister Wise said now is describing the atmosphere. She's describing who is there. She's saying there is the throne. There is the throne, and around the and around the head, around the throne, a rainbow of promise. They are cherubim, seraphim. They are cherubim and seraphim. The commanders of the angel host, the sons of God. Now, there are two sets, three sets of people here. I mean, three sets of being here. You see, there are cherubim and seraphim. Then she goes on to say, the commanders of the angel host, the sons of God. So she's saying here that the sons of God are the commanders of the angel host, the representatives of the unfallen world are assembled, are assembled. The heavenly council before which Lucifer has accused God and his son, the representatives of those sinless realms, realms over which Satan has sought to establish his dominion, all are there to welcome the Redeemer. They are eager to celebrate his triumph and to glorify their King. Amen. So the sons, the sons of God, so the sons of God are from the fallen world. The of angels, the sons of God, they are representative of the unfallen world. Mm -hmm. Alright? So you have angels, all the angels, as we go on the see how mighty the angels are. Just taken from the third page, this page, uh, 832, paragraph 15. Alright? So just keep in mind here, sons of God. Alright? So we will come to that sons of God as we go on. But they are representatives of the unfallen world. Yes, sister. So the sons of God are from the unfallen world. That's right. And as we go on, we'll see that more clearly. Okay. So um, if we have a conversation about this outside, how would we um, prove it from the Bible? We'll see it, oh, we'll see it as we go on. But he waves them back. Not yet. He cannot now receive the covenant of glory and the royal rule. He enters it. He enters. He, he has to enter in the Father's presence to present himself to us. He enters into the presence of his Father. He points to his wounded head, the pierced side, the mad feet. He lifts his hands, bearing the prints of nails. He points to the token of his triumph. He presents to God the wave sheet, all right, which is the first fruit that God directed with him. Those who raise, those raised with him as representatives of the great multitude who shall come forth from the grave at his second coming. So these people, those saints that were resurrected with Jesus at his resurrection, they are the first fruit, and they are, they are representative of the great multitude who shall come forth in the grave at the second coming. In Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 6, we see that the Lord himself shall descend from heaven, right, from heaven with a shout, with a shout with the with the come of God, God, and the dead in Christ shall rise forth. These are representative of those, these people are representative of those people. That's just the... Uh, the wave she. Wave sheet are the same as the, um, yeah, very, the, the, the tokens of, of yes. Christ's victory. Right, because in the yeah. harvest time, in the feast of harvest, in the week of harvest, mm -hmm. they had to harvest the first fruit, the first fruits of the harvest, and we should take it and wave it before the heavenly Father. All right, in acceptance. And so this is the same thing that is that is going on here. Let's, let's go back. It says here, he approaches the Father, with whom there is joy over one sinner that repents, who rejoices over one with sin. Now, if God rejoices, the Bible says heaven rejoices over one sinner that repents, Father, for that multitude. Right? That has been resurrected to Christ. There will be a whole set of praising God there. And it's not one. It's more than one. Before the foundation 
of the earth. He approaches the Father with whom there, are, there is joy over one sinner that repents, who rejoices over one who singing before the foundation of the earth were laid. The Father and the Son are united in a covenant to redeem man if he should be overcome by Satan. And we know that from reading Zechariah chapter 6 and verse 13, right? Where it says that there you was know, a council of peace. You see, this is God's eternal purpose. God's eternal purpose is that every one of us should be saved. Right? Mm-hmm. And so before, before the foundation of the world, you see that in uh, Matthew chapter 24 and verse 34, before the foundation of the world, you also see that in Revelation chapter 13 and verse 8 and other scriptures, that God's eternal purpose was set up before the foundation of the world to save you and I when we should save it. Counsel from the devil. Let's continue. The first and four elders are not humans redeemed from the earth. For they are the saints, nor are they the nor saints. are they the saints that resurrected with Jesus when he resurrected early that Sunday morning. Let's continue. Now, in the Bible, if we now enter into this Sunday morning, in the Bible, the phrase the Son of God appears twelve times. The Son of God. In Genesis chapter 6 and verse 2 and 4, we read about the Son of God. Right? In Exodus, in Job chapter 1 and verse 6, it also speaks about the Son of God. I just want to give the, the, the scriptures just for the time sake. Alright? Also in Job 38, also in John 1 12. Alright? Romans 8, 14, 19, and Philippians chapter 2 and 15, and 1 John 3, 1 and 4. Now, the sons of God make reference to also you and I, to be sons of God also. Alright? For sake of time, because we have all passed it, for the sake of time, we go. It says in Job 34, and goes, in, goes, in Job 38, the Lord says, Where hast thou? When I leave, where was thou when I leave the foundation of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. The scribe says, Who had laid the measure thereof, if thou knowest? Or who had stretched the line upon it? The six says, Where, whereupon are the foundations thereof? Fastened, who laid the cornerstone thereof? And when the morning star, star, sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Now let's go to Job 6. Job chapter 1 and verse 6. Now here it is here. It says, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down. Let's go to another text before I explain what's going on here. The scriptures declare upon one occasion when the angels of God came to present themselves before the Lord, Satan came also among them. Now to bow before the eternal king but to further his own malicious design against the righteous with the same object, he is in attendance when, when men assemble for the worship of God. Now notice here that Satan appears as the representative of earth, mm-hmm. right? As the representative of earth he appears. Let's look at this other here. Turn the floor again. In Job chapter 2, it says again there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, that Satan came also among them to present before the Lord. Now, this is a second time he came again, a second meeting again, he came again to present himself. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence thou comest? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and forth in the earth, and from walking 
up and down in it. So we see here that Satan is, is given representation as, as a representative of earth. Mm-hmm. Now, if we go to who was given dominion of the earth? As we read in chapter in Genesis chapter one, right? In Genesis chapter two, we see that um, Adam, Adam was given dominion, right? He was to be the ruler of this earth, and that was given up to Satan because himself and Eve they listened to Satan and they fell from glory. I'll say here, in the heavenly council, the angel seated with Lucifer, right? The king of the universe summoned the heavenly host before him. And God assembled the angel of course to take measures to avert the threatened evil. It was decided in heaven's council for angels to visit Eden and warn Adam and and one Adam that he was in danger from the fall. Two angels fell on their way to visit our first parents. Question. How did Ellen White identify the sons of God? That's a question we will attempt to answer. We say the commanders the commanders of the angel folks the sons of God, the representative of the fallen world. Un- remember, un- the unfallen world, right? Remember we read that yeah. previous where mm-hmm. the sons of God are representative of the unfallen world. Mm-hmm. So here she is describing them in more detail. They are assembled. The heavenly council before which Lucifer had accused God and his son, the representative of these sinless rulings over which Satan has sought to establish his dominion. All are there to welcome the Redeemer. They are eager to celebrate His triumph and to glorify their King. Continue. It says here that His goal was driven with and without. John says, I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. The vision is presented to John A. Impression upon his mind. The destiny of every nation was contained in that book. John was distressed at the utter inability of any human being or angelic of a, or angelic intelligence to read the words or to even look very. And this is we are reading in in um, Revelation chapter five, right? She's describing this here now. To say that his soul was brought up to such a point of agony and suspense that no one of the strong angels, or she's, she's making reference here also to the, the angels from the unfallen world. She's calling them one of the strong angels. Now let's go to Revelation chapter 5 and verse 5 and read it and you'll see. One of the angels. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 5. He says, and one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, had prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. One of the elders. And she's saying here, one of the strong angels. So she's fighting those, 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 uh, elders. Uh, elders as strong angels. She says, one of the strong angels has compassion on him. And laying his hand on him, assuredly said, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, had prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. So this is the only time that Jesus is mentioned, but he's mentioned as the lamb. Alright? And Sister White, in reference to calling to these, these representative of the unfallen world, one of the elders, he's saying they are one of the strong angels. And this is taken from Isaiah 12, uh, 296, paragraph 4. Let's continue as we get on. Time of the time, December 22nd, 1887. The Bible says, it says this. John beholds an innumerable company, precious, refined, purified, around the throne of the majesty of heaven. 
the angels inquired of John, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence come they? And John answered, So thou knowest. Then the angel declared, These are they which came out of the great tribulation and have washed their robes and have made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Now, if you look at um, Revelation chapter um, 7, I believe, it's 7 and 9, where, where the angel, one of the angels is asking, Who are these? Alright, and she gives the answer there. Angel, angel inquires of John, what are these? The uh, red and white rules. Let's continue. Uh, Someone in thought, volume 1, page 20, paragraph 2, it says, John saw a company standing around the throne of God, and the angels asked him, Who are these in white rules? He answered, Thou knowest. And the angels said, these are they which have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. They, they are a fountain, there is a fountain in which they may wash from every state of impurity. And says the angel, who shall lead them to fountains of living waters and shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. This will be the happy privilege of those that have kept the commandment of God and truth. Let us continue. Stand at the time, November 22nd, 1905, tells us this. As John saw the multitude standing around the throne of God, the question was asked, What are these which are raised in the white road? And when they come, the angel answered, These are they which came out of the great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Now, if you notice here, in Revelation chapter uh, 7, is one of the elders that asked this question, and she said that one of the elders is the angel. Alright? Let's continue. Bible commentary, 11, 73, paragraph 5, tells us this. It says, the, heaven, the heavenly beings are appointed to answer the prayers of those who are working unselfishly for the interest of of the cause of God. They are very, they, the very highest angels in the heavenly court are appointed to work out the prayers of the saints, the prayers which are sent to God for the advancement of the cause of God. Each angel has, the, has a particular post of duty which he is not permitted to leave for any other place. If he should leave, that is will gain an advantage. So all this is in reference to the twenty and four elders that has been spoken of in the book of Revelation chapter five. Question Why was the unfallen world represented by the strong angel and planet Earth was represented by a human mm-hmm. That is good Question, very important question. Here it says here. All heaven took a deep and joyful interest in the creation of the world and of man. Human beings were a new and distinct order. They were made in the image of God, and it was the Creator's design that they should populate the earth. They were to live in close communion with heaven, receiving power from the source of all power upheld by God they were to live sinless lives. So God's intent for creating the human race is that they should live a sinless life and repop and populate the earth with sinless human beings. Okay? And this is taken from uh, Sons and Daughters, page 7, paragraph 2. Let's continue. It says, Adam was strong king in Eden. Who was strong king in Eden? Adam, Adam was strong king in Eden. What did he the king? He was given dominion over everything on earth. So he indeed, he was king. But he gave up that kingship to who? The Adam was king. To him was given dominion over every living thing that God had created. Every living thing. The Lord blessed Adam and Eve with intelligence such as he had not given to any other creature. He was made 
he made Adam the rightful sovereign over all the works of his hands. Man made in the divine image to contemplate and appreciate the glorious works of God in nature. So you see, if Adam did if, if Adam didn't really relinqu- relinquish his kingship, his dominion, he would have been the ruler. Right? He was the ruler, he was the king, he was crowned king, and that was taken away by his by his by the giving to Satan. Alright? Adam was crowned king. He was given the dominion over every living thing. That's the opinion. And the ransom ones are welcome to the city of God. They ring out the air and exalt and cry adoration. Oh, adoration. The two Adams are about to leave. The Son of God is standing with outstretched arms to receive the Father of our race. Now, Sister White is going on to describe what is happening in, in, in heaven. The being whom he created, who sinned against his maker, and for those sins, the mass of the crucifixion are born upon the Savior's form. As Adam discerns the prince of the cruel nails, he does not he does not fall upon the bosom of his Lord, but in humiliation casts himself at his feet, crying, Worthy, worthy is the lamb that was slain. Tenderly the Savior lifts him up and bids him look once upon the Eden home, the Eden home from which he has so long been exiled. Just imagine the two Adams meet. Alright? Looking forward to that event. Let's continue, he's not. My time is getting short. After his expulsion from Eden, Adam's life and truth was filled with sorrow. Every dying leaf, every victim of sacrifice, every blight upon the fair face of nature, every stain upon man's purity was a fresh reminder of the sin. Terrible was the agony of remorse as he beheld iniquity upon them, and in answer to his warning, met the approaches passed upon himself as the cause of sin. With, with patient humility, he bore for nearly a thousand years the penalty of transgression. Peacefully did he repent of his sin and trust in the merits of the promised Savior, and he died in the and he died in the hope of the resurrection. The Son of God redeems man redeemed man's failure and fall. And now through the work of the atonement, Adam is reinstated in his first dominion. Amen. Amen? Amen. Let's continue. It's going to get more clear. God created man for his own glory. That after death and trial, the human family might become one with the heavenly family. It was God's purpose to repopulate heaven with the human family. Then we have a wonderful God. He can see the beginning from the end. And he made provision so that when man sins, they can repopulate heaven. That's God. We see it more clear. Satan, Satan has an accurate knowledge of the sins that he has tempted God's people to commit. And he urges his accusation against them. Declaring that by their sin they had forfeited divine protection and claiming that he has the right to destroy them. Many times, maybe it happened to some of us here, that we'll reach so far way back before we become born again, that we say to ourselves that we cannot be redeemed for all the things that we have done, all the wrong things that we have done. And this is an, an insinuation of Satan upon our mind. Right? To tell us that God cannot redeem us because our sin has been so much and so wide it has gone so deep. Let's continue. He pronounces them just as deserving as himself of exclusion from the people of God. See? Are these, he says, the people who are to take my place in heaven and the place of the angels who united with me? So he knows, he knows that the redeemed will take his place in heaven and take the place of the angels that he has taken with him. Let's continue. It's 
story of redemption, page 19 and paragraph 2 tells us this, the father consulted, consulted his son in regard to at once carrying out their purpose to make man the ha- the ha- to inhabit the earth. He will place man upon probation to test his loyalty before he could be rendered eternally secure. If he endured the test, there would God so fit to prove him he should eventually be equal with the angel. He was to have the favor of God and he was to converse with angels and they with him. Isn't that wonderful? Mm-hmm. We have to be equal with angels. Let's look at Luke chapter 20, verses 34 to 36. Someone can turn them and please read this Luke chapter. Luke chapter 20, verses 34 to 36. And Jesus answered and said, said unto them, the children of this world, the children of this world marry and are given in marriage, but they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world and the resurrection from the dead, neither married nor are given into marriage. Neither can they die any more, for they are equal unto the angels and are the children of God. In the children of the resurrection. Amen. Amen. So you see here, Sister White is just making that, that text a little clear. Let's continue. Mm-hmm. We've got another May 29, 1900, paragraph 4, paragraph 12, says, The great architect wants to form us into a holy temple for himself. That is what purpose was to be holy. Only those who are partakers of the divine nature, we have learned about this divine nature, alright? Only those who are partakers of the divine nature can understand this. Those who walk even as Christ walks, who are patient, gentle, kind, meek, and lowly in heart, those who yoke up with Christ and lift his spirit who yearn for souls as he yearned for them, these will enter into the joy of their Lord. They will see Christ, the travail of his soul, and be satisfied. Those who walk with Christ. Are you walking with Christ? Mm. Those who are patient, those who are kind, those who are gentle, those who are meek and lowly in heart. Are you meek? Are you lowly in heart? Are you gentle? All these are truths of those who would be, who would replace the fallen angels in heaven. They will see Christ, will see Christ with the veil of his soul and be satisfied. Heaven will triumph for the vacancies made in heaven by the fall of Satan and his angels will be filled by the redeemed of the Lord. Don't you want to take one of the angels, the fallen angels, please? Amen? The fallen angels, do you want to take that take, take their place? Is that selfish or not? Huh? Mm-hmm. Is that selfish or not? No, that is God's eternal purpose for each and every one of us. That's not selfish. It cannot be selfish. So, uh, a question would be asked. Yes. Many would ask this question. Pastor is laughing. Probably he have an answer for you. Many would ask this question, brother. Are we created to replace these angels? Many would ask that question. Of course. Yes. That, uh, that's God's eternal purpose for us. See here? We can wants to form, wants to form into a holy temple for himself. He wants to form in us the holy temple by the power of the Holy Spirit. So to the power of the Holy Spirit to our minds so that we can be in right unison with him, himself and Christ. And this he cannot put us for us. A couple of slides uh, before that Yeah. Mm-hmm. You wanna go back to that slide? Yeah. This is redemption 19. I think it is we're looking at uh, the uh, point this one, right? Yeah. Yeah. After the test and trial, what were the test and trial? Right? The test and trial when when the serpent came to the Galilee and he fell and exchanged the mind of God for the mind of Satan. Alright? So let's let us continue. Question. Yeah. So if that was God's intention, 
is a hero set of things. Is that so? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's my question. Yep. Yeah, he sets things and he gave us a, 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 he sets things up and he gave us freedom of choice. And so we have to choose for him or against him. And if he choose for him, he says that he was forming us holy temple for himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it's very important to understand mm-hmm. the principle of God's eternal purpose. Otherwise, it can easily end up in a predestination. Yes. Yeah, no. So our goal should not be to go get this angel place. Mm-hmm. That would be a result, right. but not our goal. Right. Our goal is to prove God right. right. It's because the whole, all heaven, Satan came in and bring this accusation against God, and it could not be satisfied fully. And God said, okay, let me create man in my own image to answer you. So we are created as human beings to That's answer perfect. the question in a great country. That's what we're here for. Amen. So, so when it's finished, huh? We're created to be the judge. Yeah. yeah. So when it's finished, then we are going to say they are placed, mm-hmm. and that is the proof that they give up on their own place. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it, it, but it should not be our intention. You know what? Let me get right to get these people placed. That is My goal is God has created me to prove Satan wrong and yeah. prove him right. I surrender so he will fulfill his purpose. He's going to decide where to put one. So each and every one of us have his... So when you talk about place here, heaven has a different significance because place might be the number. Okay, we can be 100 people here with different places. And we can lose 60, and we can take another 6,500 to take their place, but not their literal place. Mm-hmm. We get that? Because the place we are going to be in heaven, it's at the throne of God, and no angel goes there. Right. Because we're going to have the life of God that's uncreated. So, and that will be to the whole universe. Satan has accused me to be selfish. Right here, I am sharing my nature with the, the lowest of all. So, the, all the doubt on God's character, his goodness, will left every mind forever. And the, everyone will be secure against sin forever and locked in. The sin will not rise again. Amos chapter 1 verse 9. Alright. Okay, Neon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Love that scripture so much. What is it there? Quick question. The other worlds, are they still on probation? Are they fully, um, all the dogs have been like now? Yeah, they are safe. They are now free. These are ages 761. This is the course. 758 and then 761 yeah. paragraph. Seven, five, eight, paragraph one and two. Tell us two. Revelation twelve, twelve. Rejoice in heaven and all that dwell in them. So it's cast out. Let's Have a problem? So we have seen that the 24, the 24 elders 
I'm not going to redeem people from the earth. They are my fallen angels from the other world. And the God has created us to repopulate the earth and to repopulate heaven and to take the place of the angels and folks that fell and left. Alright, so as we see from this study that we have a great purpose. And our purpose is to replace but it's not really, as Pastor was saying, it's not supposed to be selfish, mm-hmm. and, and selfish and a selfish incentive, right? We should take it as God created us, and we ought to surrender ourselves to Him so that He can use us in, in the gospel, and use us in the His word, to prove Satan wrong, and He is right, and to vindicate His character. Amen. So may God help us as we continue, as we go through the study, and... Um, as we post it on our sister Kim and Henry we post it on mm-hmm. our Facebook or mm-hmm. the other yeah. channel. And so we will have it. Alright? Yeah. So if you have any questions, any comments, we just ask if anything with the word of prayer. Beloved and eternal Father, we thank you for the privilege to study your word once again and we have seen clear from your word what your word says. We pray, Lord Father, that we will surrender ourselves to you so that you can use us so that supernatural work can take place within our minds so that we can be truly yours and do what you want us to do and be the people that you really, that you have called us for. So bless us, be each and every one of us, every friend. We thank you again for the presence of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, ten minutes break. It's literal.